Okay, so welcome back to T Upload TV and thank you for joining the average golfer at the Taggers target wall. We're gonna have a scan across that uh, and see just exactly what's happened in the last week. I cannot believe the amount of people that have A, been added to the board, but also the positive impact it seems to be having in the number of reductions. We've got handicap reductions, that is. So there's plenty of white on the board. I'm gonna go through those names now and tell you who is making the difference, who's making the downward reductions in their target for 2018. Okay, so like I say, it's fantastic to see so many reductions and I'm gonna go through some of them now. Uh, Harry Corver, 9.6 on the way to nine. Martin Hemmons, 13.3 now on the way to 10. Uh, we've got Bill Diaz, 11.5 on the way to 10. Brian Treadwell, 13.1 on the way to nine. I've read those two out already. We've got Dee Farish, 16.8 down to 15. Don't know his first name. Thomas Hickey, 3.9 on the way to two. That's some handicap. Then we've got Dave Richard, 12.6 on the way to nine. And behind me, we've got Nick W from Amsterdam. He's, six, he's now 16 on the way back to 12. I just can't believe, like I said, the way in which the wall is growing, so let's keep it growing. But also, I've got some news about how I wanna use this wall to reward every tagger out there. I wanna get some, I wanna reward loyalty. I'm gonna do a giveaway, and this is how it's gonna work. Okay, so. My issue with giveaways has always been this. In general terms, the way in which any channel, whether or a Twitter account, looks to give something away is by encouraging new people to get involved. So it may be that you have to retweet and tag in three others. Um, it encourages new subscribers to channels. And I get it's all to do with driving traffic to your media platform, which is brilliant. And I'd love that to happen. But the only issue I have with all those things is that they don't reward the people who are loyal to the channel. So the people already exist and support the channel through the early days up until the current situation. So that's what I wanna try and do. And the way in which I'm gonna do it is to do with the Taggers target board. And it's gonna work in two ways. It'll be a giveaway to reward loyalty, but it'll also hopefully provide further incentive and encouragement to work on your handicap reduction and your target for 2018. So the way it's gonna work is dead simple. You're on the Taggers target board, you need to have a handicap reduction during 2018. So you need to see some white on the board and some red. White indicates that your handicap has been changed for the better and the red will be the new right. And I'll keep a list of all the players that have had a handicap reduction during 2018 on a Taggers target board. Don't be making any of it up because I'll be checking with your handicap secretary if the changes are official. Right, now then, at the end of 2018, and when I say the end, I'm gonna be talking September time because we're gonna do it at the end of the season. At the end of September 2018, we will do a draw out of all the people that have had a handicap reduction and one of you will win a bundle of prizes that I will put together between now and September. The first thing that's gonna go into the mix is a 100 pound voucher to be used on the averagegolfer.com. And that's to buy hoodies, caps, and all the rest of it. So it goes to support the channel even further. So that's a 100 pound voucher for the averagegolfer.com. We'll put, I will put, a couple of dozen golf balls in. And then what will happen is along the way, there's different bits and bobs that come in from manufacturers. I will start to put a few bits aside so that we end up with a significant prize pot at the end of it all. So believe me, it will be well worth winning. My chipping has improved so much. The hole just looks massive right now. I just don't seem to be able to miss every time I've got this wedge in my hand. But that's confidence for you, right? Eh? What do you mean that's not the right hole? Fuck golf. I've never heard of it. What's fuck golf? Ok, 
Okay, so what I want to talk about next is wedges, and in particular, wedge fitting. I want to know, first question of today's video, how many of you have been fitted for your current wedges? Now, personally, I've never been fitted for wedges, but I'm really interested because I read a lot about the bounce, grind on wedges, and there's such a huge range of options right now with what, I don't know whether you walk into a store, you'll read all kind of different um, numbers, grinds, how do we make sense of it? How do we make sense of exactly what that means? And I just wonder how much difference having the right bounce in particular on the sole of that club makes a difference to your performance. Because it's very much dependent on how you play the shots, from what sort of lie, maybe what sort of course you play, whether the lie be a particularly tight lie, do you clip the ball off the top, do you take divots? So it, for me, all of a sudden, wedge fitting has become a very interesting part of the bag and it's something I want to pay some particular attention to in the weeks ahead. So slight divot taken there with this wedge that I've got in hand currently. And I think for me personally, I'd really like to understand the correct bounce for me and my type of swing and the way I deliver a wedge at impact. And I hope you do too. So in the weeks ahead, the plan is, providing it's something you want to watch, is I'm looking at doing a wedge fitting video. I'm trying to get a manufacturer involved and see if uh, we can get an expert onto the channel and have a real close look at how much difference a wedge can make or the right wedge can make for your game. So again, comments down below, is that a video you'd be interested in? And I'd also like to know how many of you have already been fitted for wedges that you currently have in the bag. Okay, so here's an interesting one for you. We did a video in recent weeks discussing the amount of releases from the major brands. And in particular, we were talking about Callaway because they just released, um, in Europe only actually this one, but they reduced, uh, released the XR Speed Driver, which was in addition to already the Epic range, the Rogue range in early part of 2018, and now this XR Speed Driver, along with numerous sets of irons that have come out in the past 12 months. And one of the things we discussed was the um, how regular manufacturers release product. I think in the main, it's kind of like, it's really tailor-made and Callaway that come in from the, for, the, for the bulk of the criticism um, for, for this element of, uh, of products. But what was really interesting, um, I think it was latter part of, of last week, was Callaway reduce, uh, re released their sales figures for 2017. And it was incredible. I haven't got the numbers to date, but I read the article briefly and they've increased quite significantly um, their overall turnover for that period. And it surprised me a bit because it's kind of like the majority of comments within the video that we discussed were all about really critical towards Callaway and manufacturers, not towards Callaway, towards manufacturers who release a lot of product. Um, and I think that would have been the general trend. It was a high percentage of people would have been on the critical side. There was very few people that uh, supported the regular release of product. Um, so there's a complete contradiction then when you see that actually a low people or golfers in general are coming at least onto YouTube videos to talk about criticizing this release, that actually golfers out there are clearly reflecting in sales of Callaway product that that's not actually the general sense of opinion. And in this instance, it's the strategy that Callaway have, whether it be that they are releasing product too frequently, is certainly working in terms of sales. Um, so whether we know that products are being released too soon, whether we know that products maybe haven't moved on that significantly in a 12 month period, we're still dipping our hands in our pockets and buying these products. So it's an interesting one and it just brings up the debate. I think, you know, are you as surprised as me? Because like I said, I was taken aback. I think one big thing and one interesting thing, it's been a comment that's been made for quite some time now. Callaway um, are really making a real big go at the ball market. There is no doubt about that. I think they've got to be looked at as the real thorn in the side of Titleist right now. Um, and again, their percentage of ball sales has increased significantly. Their 
percentage of ball sh um, sales in the marketplace uh, has increased, their market share has increased significantly. So clearly they're making a big move with the Callaway Chrome Soft X and the Chrome Soft, um, again, the new balls that were released this year. And again, the cheaper end at the Chromes, um, at the Supersoft. So they're having a real impact, I think, on ball sales, which but clearly they're having a great deal of success and uh, you can't knock them for that right now. Their strategy is clearly working for them in terms of sales. So interested to know your opinion on that one. Okay, so that is it for today's daily-ish vlog. Um, don't forget, let me know about them when she's really interested to see. A, do you want to see the video of the kind of... Uh, explanation about wedges and how you should be looking to get the wedge tailored for your game and also like i said for those of you who have been fitted for your wedges give me some details have you seen the benefits is it a worthwhile process uh, other than that well done and congrats to everybody who's made a move on a taggers target board this week don't forget if you've made any changes or if you want to get involved now is the time to stick it in the comments below name target for 2018 and current handicap, that's all I need. That is me done, right? Thanks for watching. I will see you very soon.